In today's episode we will electrify an IKEA sofa. And it turned out really mad. Since the pandemic started there was no opportunity to meet my maker friends. But recently I was visiting Berlin and I decided to stay a little bit longer to make a project with my friends. Dave Darko is living in Berlin and he's member of the makerspace Exheim. He invited me and Alex, you know him as Tiny LED Matrix, to tinker a project there on the weekend. We didn't plan anything, but Dave had some broken hoverboards laying around. Parts were missing, cables were ripped, but we hoped to salvage the hub wheels and the drivers at least. He also happened to have some spare electric bike batteries. One of the batteries was even working. Since the x sign had this really cheap IKEA sofa laying around, we thought, why not electrify it? We should be able to mount some casters in the back and the electric motors in the front. One of the broken hoverboards came with a battery, but the battery was dead. We opened it cautiously and found a BMS inside. That's the thing that balances the voltage between the individual cells. Some of the cells were close to zero volts. So we tried to revive them with the power supply at a low current. Sometimes that really works. If the cell can keep a certain voltage, the BMS doesn't refuse to charge it. That's also a good trick if you have some batteries that are refused to be charged by a charger. Unfortunately, we weren't able to recover this battery. Some of the cells were really dead beyond repair and wouldn't hold any charge. We tried to connect the electric bike battery. We wanted to find out if the controller and the drivers are okay. It seemed to work. <laughs> we opened the battery case and replaced the old connector, which isn't common, with an XT60 connector. That's way better to handle for us. Pecker mode activated. Since this hoverboard is controlled by two extra boards with some gyros on it, we tried to intercept the communication to be able to control the drive directly. However, the protocol was 9-bit and very complicated. There are other people that tried that before. We were able to communicate a little bit, but it was somehow not working properly. A command failed. While Alex and I were trying to make this work, Dave was improving the sofa to be able to mount the metal parts that are holding the hub drives in place. That was really the simplest solution and quite sturdy. I fixed all the broken wires from one of the hub wheels and extended them by a meter to be able to reach across the sofa to the controller. We thought if we can intercept the communication we can use the gyro boards to control it directly with that maybe mounting them to some levers or something. I mean, that would be funny. Yet somehow we still had some problems to make it work. For the back of the sofa, we got some casters from the hardware store. And Dave turned out to be the MVP here again. He found some compatible firmware that you can upload to the board and then control it with a nunchuck controller. There is even an online configuration tool that compiles the firmware for you, so you can just upload it. But you need an ST link for that. I linked everything below if you want to modify your own hoverboard. I mean, now that the speed controllers are really expensive, these hoverboard controllers are a good alternative. We attached everything, added the nunchuck controller and were ready to test. Ready? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Finally some success, it was really working, we just needed to flip one of the wheels. A few moments later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Left and right. Oh! But then we had another setback. One of the sides had no power at all. Since we didn't have the matching transistors at hand, we decided to switch the controller and the wheels to the ones from the other hoverboard that we had. That was some work again. But the result looked promising. This board seemed to be working now. Here is Dave testing it casually. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Since we didn't have enough space to test it properly, we took it outside. The sofa was really violent. Almost like a bull ride. We were tweaking and testing until the structural integrity of this super cheap particle board sofa started to fall apart. We added some plywood and decided to use only one caster. This way it should be easier to control. It was really cool. Please be careful if you decide to build this on your own. Jetzt bräuchte die Steuerung weniger Power wieder, ne? We were happy that during this accident only the controller was ripped off. I hope this project inspired you to build something on your own. At least we had a lot of fun on this weekend and I was glad to see my friends again. Please subscribe if you like stuff like that. And thanks to all my supporters. I see you next time. Bye. Yeah, God,